Apparently it's Godzilla week. I've finally been able to catch up on Monarch Legacy of Monsters. So let's talk about it. Hi, my name is Sean and I love to talk about movies and TV way too much. With that in mind, go ahead and join me down below in the comment section. Share your thoughts on the new series Monarch Legacy of Monsters. Now, they actually first sent out links to the press to watch episodes back in September. I've just been so busy, I wasn't able to check it out. I am interested in this series. Apple TV has a pretty good track record, but I just couldn't get to it until this past week, and that just happened to line up with the release of Godzilla Minus One, which I watched, reviewed, and absolutely loved. And so I've been very much in a Godzilla mood as of recently. Now, if you don't know what Monarch is, it is a TV show set in the MonsterVerse. That is the Warner Brothers current franchise, Godzilla vs. Kong, Skull Island, all of that fun stuff. Not Godzilla Minus One, that's its own thing, but the Warner Brothers Hollywood films, the ones that are gonna have a new movie coming out next year. It's set in that universe and kind of spanning several decades about the secret organization that has been studying these dinosaurs throughout the years that has been popping up and alluded to or major part of the monster verse. And this show is kind of showing us its origins. What was it doing after the events of Godzilla 2014 and kind of so much more. Let's get started with the review. And simply put, thus far, I've felt like the show gets better with each episode. The first episode I felt was a little bit too slow, a little bit too talky, and the characters weren't quite interesting enough, but it kind of built just enough intrigue of like, okay, where's that going? All right, what's going to happen there? All right, where, what, what does that mean? And then the second episode started to answer a couple questions. The characters got a little bit more interesting. And by the third episode where Kurt Russell becomes a more prominent part of the show, it was like, all right, this, I'm, all right, I'm getting involved. It feels like the plot has kicked in. And then by this latest episode, it was like, oh, I, I can't wait to check this one out. Or, or, is it dropped already? Let me go to watch it as early as I can. And then it ended and I was like, can't wait till next week when I can see the next episode and see what's kind of happening here. And so I think it, it took a little while to get going and you have to go into it knowing it is Monarch. It's not Godzilla, the TV show, it, it's Monarch. So if you like TV shows about lore, about secret organizations that have monsters pop up, you got a couple action sequences in each episode with a big gigantic monster. Sometimes it's Godzilla, usually it's something else. If you like that kind of thing, then I think the show has something to offer. It felt to me like in different episodes and in different ways, it's a little bit like a, I don't know, kind of hero's journey plot or a Star Wars plot applied to Godzilla. Here's what I mean by that. We introduce these two characters that are frustrated where life is at, and then they slowly get pulled into this bigger conspiracy threat that's larger than themselves. They meet a mentor character that lets them know that they are part of this big grand legacy. And then they're swept off on this adventure. Well, that's Star Wars. It's kind of Harry Potter. It's kind of classic hero's journey stuff in a, a context you don't really expect it. So using it in a little bit of a subversive way, but the good version of subversive, not the bad version of it. And so I kind of like that. And that's, I think why once it got going, when we're in the early parts and it's like kind of these, our two lead characters moping and bickering about their family stuff. It's like, I don't, I don't know either one of you and neither one of you has shown your positive side. So your bickering isn't very endearing. Once they get on the action, they do some flashbacks to kind of let us know who they are a little bit, warmed up to them. And they start warming up to each other, and that's much more fun to watch them on an adventure, learning about each other and learning about their family than it is watching two people that feel like both of them are just being obtuse about a really difficult situation. This latest episode in particular, like the first couple episodes, I was kind of frustrated by the hopping around in time because it's doing it so much and it's not 
not linear with what it's doing. And at the beginning, it wasn't at all. So you're like, where, where are we at? Who did that? And they don't fully introduce characters in a manner that makes it obvious. Sometimes when it's a younger version of someone. So it's a little bit tough to follow in particular, with John Goodman being associated with the guy that plays younger John Goodman. I didn't know that until I read the Wikipedia page. Uh, it's like, they do not look the same. And it is not at all plausible that that guy would age that much in 10 years. But um, when you get into these last couple episodes, it was a lot more reminiscent of Lost, a show which, when it was good, was fantastic. In which case, you're on kind of this quest. There's urgency, there's stakes, there's threats. And then we're flashing back to, like, inform us of who they were. How did we get to where we're at with these kind of character moments that kind of, I don't know, make the characters feel like people, not just people bickering with one other swept on adventure, but fleshing out who they are. And since I like Lost, I was like, when it first, in this episode, when it first cut to the flashbacks, I was like, oh, crap. Is this just like, are you just teasing us? You're going to show us this scary situation and the rest of the episode is a flashback episode. And it didn't do that. It did the Lost format. I was like, oh, cool. All right. I, I'm down with that. I, I can live with that. That's kind of fun. Um... So uh, thus far, I'm, I'm enjoying it because I like a lot of the things that it's doing. I can see where some people would just be very underwhelmed because even right now I'm looking at the Wikipedia page, the poster, and it's Kurt Russell's face with Godzilla behind him. Kurt Russell doesn't really show up until the third episode. It doesn't really show up until the third episode um, in a major place. I mean, you see him in the second one, but takes over in the third and Godzilla is, is, has been in like 30 seconds of the show in the first 40% of the season. And so if you go into it, like you, there's things like that that could disappoint you. There's these other characters that Kurt Russell is like on a whole different level of screen presence and charisma than everyone else. Uh, even, you know, his son Wyatt playing the younger version of him. I, I like him and I'm not criticizing the other actors, but Kurt Russell has been a Hollywood actor for 60, it's over 60 years. He was a child actor. Like this guy is like royalty. And so he's just on a different level. And then Godzilla as a character, as a monster, as a presence, is such a distinct presence as well versus generic other Titan. It's always fun to see monsters destroy stuff, but Godzilla is Godzilla. You know, even, even Mothra is Mothra, but we have some of these other kind of random ones. We get monster stuff, but it's kind of turns generic. And I think there's definitely a way to be underwhelmed when you have a couple things in here that I feel like are on a different level than everything else. I think that's fair if some people are frustrated by that or feel kind of underwhelmed. Other things to talk about in here, I, I mean, Apple TV puts out solid productions that what they, they, they're still building out their ar archive of content, but what they do really well is make slick productions where it, this is a TV show and it looks great. I mean, we've, we've got a, a old man, Kurt Russell running around in the snow in the middle of nowhere. And it feels big, huge middle of nowhere. And there are certain shots where you can be like, okay, that's probably a sound state. Like there's things like that in a sense, but it feels vast. It doesn't, and we're going to all these different locations and different times and we're in forest woods and it's a TV show. And you feel like we're in a place. We don't feel like we're on the, you know, the Mandalorian technology screens or anything like that. And when monsters show up, they look cool. Like the production value is very high. Wish it was a little bit more peppy and that maybe the, the, the early pacing was a little bit too slow, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm bought into it. I'm intrigued by it. I want to check out the next episode. I, I don't know what it would look like. Even built into the, the inherent block for this show will always be it's the Godzilla show that Godzilla's not really in. That's always the block for this show that we're always going to want more Godzilla than this show I think is able to deliver because it's set in a point in time where God, we know how many times Godzilla has attacked. You can't just do a subtle like, and that time Godzilla showed up over there that we didn't talk about before. You can't do that. 
And so they're limited in how much they can use the thing that ultimately people want. So I hope they're able to find a way that as things are revealed, as we kind of build to the climax and the finale, they find a way that they can have a satisfying payoff. And I think it kind of has to be Godzilla. I don't know what else it would be. I don't know what you can do if you put Godzilla on your poster and you set it in the world of Godzilla that doesn't doesn't ha- do that. So um, anyway, those are just kind of my initial thoughts and musings on it. Um, it's it's good. It's a show I'm hooked on. It's not fully great yet, though. I think it's it's not quite there. And maybe if they can really pull it off at the end and do some cool stuff with the lore and have a big slam bang, maybe it can elevate to that level. But right now, a, 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 like, I'm getting what I hoped I would get out of it. Maybe that's the way to phrase it, which is to say, I wanted a show that kind of fleshes out all of the stuff in between. Like, we got Kong Skull Island, we got Godzilla, and all these murmurs of other things going on, and this is the show filling in the gaps, letting us have the the quest to learn about how normal people were affected by these events, fleshing all that out. I like that. I'm enjoying that, and I hope it's able to keep that up, and by the end of it, it elevates it even further. Let me know what you thought down below in the comment section. You can see my ranking of the MonsterVerse movies over there. You can see my review of Godzilla Minus One right there. Thank you so much for watching. Keep talking movies and TV too much. Bye-bye.